Uh, it's been quite a year, Sheen, since we were last here. Well, we were just over there. Um, <laughs> quite a lot's happened everywhere and personally as well. When we were here before, it was all about Kamika, I think, really. That was, that was who we were touching on in the main. Reflect on the, the rest of his season last year, if you can. I suppose even 12 months later, we're still fighting COVID. Uh, still quite worrying times, but it seems like we're over the other side and some normality is on the horizon. Kamiko bounced into action, first run of the year, winning the Kipco 2000 guineas just over there. And that was obviously my first British classic. Sheikh Fad was literally in town watching the race. Um, it was incredible that he couldn't be there, but what a special, special day. I suppose, looking forward to that, I wanted to be champion jockey. It was the mm. perfect start. It was like the second week of the season, and it really got me rolling confidence up. And then, obviously, there was a roller coaster ride ever since then. I mean, his season was a bit of a roller coaster, wasn't it? It, it was, you know, Goodwood was unfortunate. Um, he then got back on track at Newmarket, went out to the Breeders' Cup and again it didn't quite work out. Yeah, I mean an, a really unbelievable horse and I was at fault at Goodwood. Uh, I just got stuck in traffic and it can happen at that track but at the end of the day my job as, as jockey is to uh, avoid traffic and, and make sure every horse has the opportunity to win. So, but, but surely not every time a jockey finds himself in traffic it's their fault or would you say it is? Um, possibly not every time, but I could see the writing on the wall after, after jumping out of the stalls. And I've ridden enough big races that I believe I should have um, known that it was a, a strong possibility from an inside draw. If you reflect on last year, you, you retained your champion jockey crown. But do you still look back on it with regard to success on the track as with a little bit of disappointment? Yeah, I'd have liked to have ridden more Group 1 winners. I don't think I left many behind me, but you know, year on year, that's what's really important to me is the Group 1s. And um, having ridden so many in 2018 and so many in 2019, then obviously I was way down in numbers last year. I think I rode three in the whole year. And mm. Look, the primary objective this year is uh, to get back on those good horses. Finding them isn't easy, but I'll that's what I get up for in the mornings and work so hard for. And one of those Group 1 winners was Alcohol Free, who, well, she started this season really well. How do you reflect on the guineas? Um, disappointed with the way I ended up riding her. I just find that when you take her back, although it seemed like the right thing to do to get her to, to drop the bit and settle, she doesn't really get organised again. Yeah. In the Cheveley Park, I just let her roll and she was really comfortable. She, the target is the coronation at Royal Ascot and in an ideal world uh, I can just uh, easy contact in her mouth and let her roll forward. Happy enough over the mile with her? Yeah, I think so for the time being. We didn't prove she didn't get it at Newmarket because on the replay nothing is making ground on her at the end. Uh, she's just lugged a little left and was unbalanced when I really let her down but um, I blame that on me, not really her. <laughs> Are you a, a different Ushin Murphy to the one that spoke to me 12 months ago because of everything that happened last year? I think so. I carried this gigantic weight on my shoulders for a long period of time and uh, with that comes the sleepless nights and always looking over your shoulder. When, when um, um, is the inquiry going to be? When am I going to get my next notice from Franz Gallo, etc.? Uh, nobody really knew and I didn't know when I could ride up until or whatever. So um, it was quite stressful as you can imagine. And um, although I haven't grown in stature, I think uh, it, it took a fair bit of getting through. And uh, I suppose it was that uncertainty around that whole time, right? You knew what had happened and, and you knew, well, you were waiting to see what the authorities were going to say, but you were, you were comfortable with what had happened and very open about it all. But the uncertainty and everything that was being said about you obviously made you feel incredibly unsettled. Yeah, uh, I just, from day to day, you didn't know, oh, in two weeks' time, uh, will I still be riding? Mm. Um, when, when am I going to be notified that there's going to be a hearing? And as a result of that, then the whole champion jockey idea became so important to me 
that I could get far enough ahead so no matter when I had to stop riding um, that I could I could try and get it over the line that was the main objective for the season I think I decided in uh, early September before Dream of Dreams went to Haydock and won the Haydock Spring Cup for Sir Michael Stout I had a conversation with Sir Michael and he said forget about everything else going on uh, you've got my full backing and just ride the horses mm -hmm. and I knew Andrew Balding and, and the Qatar racing team felt the same way so that kind of uh, gave me the energy to keep kicking. Did you, were you happy when you were crowned champion jockey for the second time or was it more relief? No, it was relief? just complete relief. Was it? Yeah, even the first time. Um, I'll have to do it again another time to to, um, to really enjoy it. Another thing that's interesting about you, we, we praise for how, you for how good you are on social media. There was a recent social media blackout, for example, because of the abuse sure. that, 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 that athletes and, and, and top sport pe people are getting. But it's a part of your life as well. So what's your feeling towards it? Do you, you see the importance of it, but equally there must be aspects of it which you, which you really don't like. Yeah, um, I love getting messages off people uh, asking for autographs and uh, wishing me well and um, even people with questions about like why did I ride a horse a certain way. I don't mind answering all those. Yeah. Uh, it's the ones that are really not nice or, or uh, aren't much fun but I get constant messages from, from uh, young people mm. and that gives me a huge buzz that the fact that um, maybe I'm helping racing a little bit to, to uh, engage with a new fan. Yeah, when somebody comes across as wanting to be the next Sushi Murphy, a young guy, you like that, that's great, right? That's, that's yeah, or, or, even, or even, if, um, even if they just want to go racing a couple of times a year, uh, when things reopen, we're mid-May now, uh, it's just around the corner when fans can come back in. It'd be great to be stopped a million times uh, on the way in from the paddock and asked um, for autographs and photos again. It's been so long. That's going to be massive fans coming back, isn't it? What are you, what this year then, 2021, we're, we're at the start of the flat season still. What, what are you really looking forward to horses wise, everything else wise? Yeah, I suppose alcohol free uh, has had one little blip, but I think we can forgive her for that. Starman won the group two the other day at York, the Duke of York Stakes. I think he can be a top class sprinter. Mm -hmm. Of the two rows coming forward, we're yet to find some Royal Ascot superstars because they've only had one run or so, but Berkshire Shadow is very nice. And actually, David Probert rides a horse today called Harrow for Andrew Bowling at Newbury, who may not be ready to win first time out, but he's got a high level of ability. So I don't have many proven stars um, like I've had in the past. You know, lots of them have gone to stud, and etc., etc. But we're always on the lookout for them and uh, I'll, I'll keep working hard. And three-time champion jockey? That sounds very nice. Um, actually, as of today, I'm in front in the championship, but I haven't put the pressure on myself like I have done in the yeah. past. And I suppose publicly, uh, I've told everyone I will try my best, but I haven't had the sleepless nights. <laughs> so hopefully I can avoid them. And if I'm lucky enough to be there in this position, then... Um, then the sleepless nights can start in October. Well, that's, that's good to hear. You don't want too many of those. Um, Sheen, a pleasure to catch up as ever. Let's hope we have a, an easier year going forward. Thank you very much, Tom. <laughs>